Spider-Man, Spider-Man, this movie was awesome with Spider-Man. He kicked ass and stopped crime and catch thieves just like in time. Hooray! Welcome back, Spider-Man. Oh, my God, guys. I just got back from Spider-Man Homecoming. And it is great that Spidey is home in Marvel where he belongs. There's my ticket to prove it that I went to the theater. Seven, six, six, 17 adult males, $15.70. What a blast this movie was. Oh my god. Spoiler free. This is going to be a completely spoiler free review. I'm not going to say anything about the post credit scenes or any important po po plot points. Because I really want to talk with my friends about this. This movie was freaking awesome. This is my second favorite movie of 2017. Without a shadow of a doubt. This has been a great freaking year for Marvel and for superhero films in general. We had an awesome Lego Batman movie. We had a good Wonder Woman movie. We had a great Guardian sequel. I don't care what anyone says. That was amazing. It's still my favorite of the year. And Spidey is finally back in the freaking MCU. He's finally taken seriously. He's finally in a world where he belongs. The dark tone is gone from the last two films. The pain is gone. It's over now. The pain is gone from the two amazing films, this was an amazing film. Now, let me say the, the, the positives I have. I have a lot to say. The freaking performances were great. I loved Tom Holland as Spider-Man. See Hope with a stick? This is how you do it right. This is how you have superpowers and make it work and make me care about the freaking main character. Holland gave the performance of his life. He had to carry this movie because it's not Iron Man 4. He is the focus of the movie. Spidey is in the film enough for you to feel sorry for him when he gets hurt, when he's fighting a villain, or when he's, you know, just swinging around trying to save people. And he saves a lot of people. Take that, Man of Steel. There. That's my last not uh, against that movie. Trust me. I won't say it anymore. But this movie just blew my freaking mind. I cheered my head off when it was over. People looked at me. I didn't care. I waited 10 years for this, and it was so freaking worth it. Let me just get back so you guys can see my poster. Yeah, I love this movie so much. This was everything that I wanted it to be. It was hilarious. The Asian guy Ned, that played Ned, he was very funny. Zendaya, she has her moments. She's not in the film that much, but she... There's a thing about her that I'm not going to spoil that she, uh, you know, that she says at the end of the movie. I'm not going to say it. Just I'll say it in the spoiler podcast with my friends. Uh, I thought the guy that played Flash, he was fine. I just thought that the guy from the original Sam Raimi movie was a little bit more intimidating. He, he was just like a joker that ragged on penis saying, penis Parker. And I'm like, eh, that was a joke that kind of wore thin. But it's not mentioned in the second half. Um, I thought Michael Keaton, great freaking villain. If Sean has a problem with him as a villain, I'm sorry, this, I will say this, he was a better villain than Ego in Guardians 2, only because he was actually, you know, re a real person, and he wasn't, you know, like a planet or whatever, and he, his motivation just, it freaking knocked my socks off, and Keaton's performance just, it was, he's been Batman, he's been Birdman, and now he's the Vulture, he loves playing characters that can fly, no pun intended, I loved his performance. I just thought he was very intimidating. He wasn't a cartoon like freaking Green Goblin in, in Amazing Spider-Man 2. He wasn't bad CGI like the lizard in Amazing Spider-Man. This is CGI to look fantastic, dude. It was like Marvel just does the best CG when it comes to their you know big budget MCU films. They put the money on the screen and it worked and it looked great. His new look, his new design looked great. Um, Marissa Tomei, she is still hot to trot. An amazing Aunt May. Yeah, did she top uh, the uh, the uh, Rosemary Harris from the original? No, the Raimi trilogy. No, because she was more like the uh, the warm aunt from the original trilogy. But she was definitely better than Sally Field. She had more to do. She had more to say. And in the ending, I'm not going to spoil it. She says one of the best and climactic ending like end lines of a movie I've ever heard in a superhero movie. This felt like Deadpool, but for kids. But it, it had a lot of stuff for They got away with a lot of stuff for PD-13. They mentioned porn, and they, they mentioned, you know, a schlong. They, they mentioned a lot of things that were not, you know, usually in a Spider-Man movie, but it worked. And it wasn't, there was no fart jokes in this. Screw you for that for Fembuster Sony. And I'm so glad that Sony relinquished the rights. This is what happens when you relinquish the rights and bring him home where he belongs. And the costume looked freaking awesome. I loved it. The new gadgets and things, I'm not going to spoil it. You saw some of them in the trailer where he can glide and he has new web shooters and, you know, his suit is is more enhanced than the other ones. It's great. I love the suit. Uh, 
the other villain, uh, Shocker, I would say this. I thought Bokeem Woodbine was fine as Shocker. He has his moments with that freaking glowing arm that you saw in the trailer. He's fine. I think I wish they would have given him the mask, though, from the movie. You know, that yellow and black and, and red mask that he has in the cartoon. That would have made it better. But he, he did what he had to do. Dan, Donald Glover's cameo was fine. Uh, it, yes, it sets up Miles Morales in the sequel. Get over it, Josh. He's going to be in the next movie. I'm fine with it. It wasn't shoehorned in there. Donald Glover's like, I know a dude. I know where he is. Black blah, blah, blah. And then he says, yeah, my nephew. They mentioned him once. That is it. But everything else just works for me. I love the, the comedy in the movie. I laughed every single step of the way when the movie started. I said a film by Peter Parker. And I'm like, you sold me. It's just like the opening of Deadpool. The new rendition of... Dun, 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 dun. It was awesome in the post in the opening credits when they showed the Marvel sign. I was like, oh, I'm, I've been waiting for this for years. The theater was packed. The people laughed and they clapped. And Stan Lee's cameo was cool. I'm not going to spoil it when it happens. Uh, just, you know, a lot of good comedy moments. Lighthearted. It never got dark and gritty, which was what the last two films did wrong. This had a consistent tone. It was funny, lighthearted, and even the serious moments, like what happens to Peter in the second half, it works. It works very fine. Laura Harrier, the girl that played Liz, beautiful. I think she's a gorgeous black girl. I'm, I'm, I love black girls. I'm, what am I, can I say? I have taste. She. The reason that they don't let her kiss Peter, which is the only thing I'm going to say, is because she looks much older than him. Because she's like 29, and, and uh, Holland was like in his early 20s when he did this, so... I could understand why they didn't make her, you know, they made her a love interest, but no touchy-feely, which is fine. I didn't mean that in this movie. Um, it got emotion out of me. When when he loses the suit, which, you know, they showed in the trailer, that's not a that's not a spoiler, where he has that hoodie suit with the, with the goggles. I felt star sorry for him. I'm like, yeah. You know, he, he had to just go with the flow. He kept going, and, and the movie just, it, it flowed very well. It's over two hours long, but it never felt painfully padded out like the last two films did they disregarded the origin they only mentioned uncle ben once they don't say his name he says oh after what may went through i don't want to go through that again and i'm like yeah they mentioned it but they didn't shove it in your face um also there was no mention of gwen stacy in the movie it's its own movie that's what i loved about it every second the action sequence is mind-blowing there were some scenes at night where i couldn't see some of it because it was either a little bit of shaky cam, not too much, like in the Amazing Spider-Man Two, nothing like that. There's an airplane scene that rivals that, and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna say anything. It's awesome. See this in the theater, please. You're doing yourself a disservice if you don't. Sean, I know he can't because he doesn't live in a the, uh, in a city where there's theaters everywhere. But Parker, Sean, uh, Josh, uh, freaking Tevia, all of you guys, Brian, see this movie in the theater, please, 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 please. It's worth your freaking time. I loved every second. The scenes with Iron Man was cool, where he talks to Peter like, if you, if you, if you're nothing without that suit, then you don't deserve it. And I get it. I get that. That was a line in the trailer. I'm gonna just say stuff from the trailer. But uh, the scene, the bank robbery scene with the Avenger, the guys in the Avengers mask, that was pretty cool. He doesn't punch anybody in this movie. That was never an issue for me. Never. He, the way he swings webs and just knocks guys out, it's freaking awesome. It's ways that Garfield wishes he was in this freaking movie. Because this movie is going to make way more money than the amazing fil crap fest failures that Sony did in 2012 and 2014. This is the amazing Spider-Man Homecoming, for sure. And I'm dead serious. It's one of the best films I've seen this year. The best film to start the summer, you know, the, the second half of this year. I loved, the, I loved the way the film looked. The soundtrack was fine. The film flowed well. It was very funny. Net, you know, the Asian guy was really funny. Um, there's a lot of action sequences and, like, scenes. There's scenes that I'm going to say to Sean. There's a scene in this movie that reminded me of the theatrical cut of Superman 2. That's all I'm going to say. Also, they reminded me of some of the Raimi films. Nothing that they stole from. You know, they have the, the scene, you know, where he's pulling the boat. You see that in the trailer. But uh, they, that's basically like the train scene in Spider-Man 2. They mentioned uh, the year 2008. You know what that is, you guys. Uh, Pepper Potts' ca cameo, you know, Gwyneth Paltrow, was great to see her back. I loved, I missed her after Iron Man 3. You know, I, I think she's beautiful. She still looks amazing, by the way. Uh, just, I love this movie. This was everything I wanted it to be. Thank you, Sony, for not screwing this up. Thank you for giving up the fight and bringing him home where he belongs, baby. And when our spoiler-filled podcast, uh, either this weekend or next week, 
I'm gonna just I'm gonna just go freaking fanboy because this was worth the wait. It was so worth the wait. This didn't Civil War was not a fluke. Spidey was freaking awesome here. They reintroduced him and they put him in his own movie and it worked. And that crowded theater that I went to tonight was not. That was a clear indication that this movie's going to make a crap ton of money. Was it better than Wonder Woman? Oh, yes. Oh, God, yes. It didn't have a stupid feminist agenda. Oh, let's just put a bunch of, you know, uh, females in the theater and, and not exclude the guys. No, this was for the guys. This one for you, Parker. Because this movie freaking sold me from the moment it started with the scenes with Peter using his phone. I'm not going to say anything else about that, but awesome. I like making videos with my phone, too. So very relatable. That's what the movie is. It's relatable. And it was everything I wanted it to be. Everything. It had the humor. It had the lead star that was a Brit that actually worked this time. So screw you, Lucasfilm, for your incompetence. It had a great freaking uh, cast. It has a great villain. A villain that's not a cartoon. That's serious, but doesn't take it too, too far. And Keaton's performance is the reason for that. Because he... It elevated this movie to a much higher rating than I could have ever thought. I mean, would would this be would what would I say this is better? It's better than Spider Man Three. It's better than the Amazing films, and I think it's a slightly better than the first Raimi film, only because there's more Spidey in it, and there's they get they ditch the origin. There's no there's a villain that's freaking awesome. The the suit looks a lot better than the Green Goblin suit, but I would say D Defoe's performance and Keaton's performance are. Two sides of the same coin. You got a great Oscar-nominated actor putting a performance and not being a cartoon, and it worked this time. And unlike the Lizard and Electro, who was freaking Mr. Freeze, and the crappy Green Goblin in Amazing Spider-Man 2 and Rhino, no. The villain here was way better, and it's what I wanted. And it got an intimidating actor. It's like, if you mess with my family, I'll kill you. And see? And since it's Keaton, I buy it. And this movie just, it, it's, it does so many things right. Let me do this quick. I gotta do this. There we go. I kissed this poster. You know why? Because it freaking entertained me. And no, I'm not gay or nothing. I just, I love this movie. That's how much love I have for this movie. Did it top Guardians 2? No. For me, in space, and those characters just gel with me more. But thank you. Spidey is finally home. Again. And it is freaking awesome. It feels great. I laugh. I laughed hysterically throughout the whole freaking movie. And the, you know, I sat in a, in a seat in a single chair. Loved the experience. My seat was a little bit wobbly, but other than that, great freaking experience in the theater. Great movie to watch with a packed house. I, I gave my negatives, just like I said. Some of the characters could have had could have been a little bit tweaked, but for what we got, it was better than the last two movies. With out a freaking question about it and i was entertained from beginning to end they got the spirit i felt like i was watching the 90s cartoon just with a much younger peter and it worked it was freaking spot on and it was a deadpool but without the vibe it doesn't have the gore of deadpool and he doesn't curse as much as deadpool but good freaking god we got spidey back and it feels so good man Web right in the face of Sony. See, when you relinquish the rights, miracles can happen. And it did with this movie. If you had done that with Fantastic Four, we could have had a great Fantastic Four movie. And also, if, if uh, Fox had got rid of the rights of, of X-Men. he Imagine if Spidey and, and, and the X-Men were in the freaking movie together. It'd be amazing, dude. It would. And just it, it, this movie did not fail me. Ten year, after 10 years, when I saw Episode 3 and then I saw Force Awakens... I got mixed, and then I said the, the movie sucks. With this, I waited 10 years. It was worth it. And no critic, no haters, nobody is going to ever take this moment from me. Because I loved it. This is what I want to see in the theater. I want to see something new. It was a breath of fresh freaking air for me. A breath of fresh freaking air. Thank you, Marvel. Nobody does it better than you guys. You guys have already proven that ever since 2008 with Iron Man. This movie was great. I loved it. It's what I wanted from a Spider-Man movie. And it's his movie. Iron Man doesn't take over the movie. That was just a, a, a false advertisement in the trailer saying that he's going to take over the movie. No. It belongs to the web slinger right there. It belongs to him. It's his freaking movie. Holland knocked it out of the park. His performance had to carry the movie. He, he got so much weight 
to carry because he had to fill the shoes of Garfield and Tobey Maguire, and it worked. And thank God that the movie is going to make a lot of money. It's going to be a huge hit this weekend, and I can't wait to see it again. On Blu-ray, I'm going to get this because I've waited so long, and it was worth every penny. So, yeah, I fanboyed out, guys. I'm sorry I had to. This was a long time coming. You know, DC, you got a lot of catching up to you. And I guarantee you, let me say this up close with a wide-angle lens. Last Jedi, you're not going to touch this movie. Screw you and screw you and shove it. Because you can never have a character this deep, this freaking hilarious, this freaking awesome. A character that's iconic, that saved Marvel's ass in the 60s. When Stanley created this character, he made a legend. And he's back on top of the freaking mountain. Your stupid mountain scene at the end of episode 7 ain't got nothing on this movie. Nothing. This movie deserves a praise it got on Rotten Tomatoes, like a 95%. I love it. I love it. I freaking love it. It's in my top 5 of the year. Loved it. It goes right there with John Wick 2, Guardians 2, and... Lego Batman. Hell of a year for movies, man. It really was. Wonder Woman would probably be seven or eight, but this was better because it's a character I've, I've loved since I was a kid, and they brought him back, and that's all I can say. Back where he belongs. Thanks, guys, for watching. I hope you guys watch this video. Share it with your friends on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, like it. Give a thumbs up. Give your comments on what you thought about the movie. I loved it. There's nothing that I can say Negative, that would be like, like I said, I had some nitpicks, but there was nothing that took me out of the movie. They're like, oh, God, they had to do that? No. It was just, it was near perfection. Just slightly, Spider-Man 2 is still my favorite of all time, because that one, better, the best villain of the franchise so far. And, you know, I saw that in the theater in Manhattan. I loved it. And I, I miss James Franco here. I know Harry Osborn wasn't in this movie. It's fine. You don't need him. Ned was fine. And he was never a douchebag. Like Harry was in like Spider-Man 3. But hey, this was a huge step in the right direction. And it proves that, yeah, you take stuff away from Sony, you're going to get miracles will happen. And it did for their friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. See you guys in the next review. Go see this movie. Spider-Man is back. And I cannot wait to see more in, in Infinity War and the sequels. Bring it on. I can't wait. Later.